the longer that these medications are on the market, the more conditions and diseases they find that benefit from treatment with these medications. What does that mean for you? And are there more shortages to come? Hey everybody, it's Allie. I'm on a fantastical weight loss journey. I hope you'll come along for the ride. And today I'm gonna to be talking about shortages because we all hate them. We all have them. It doesn't matter if you're on Manjaro, Zepbound, Ozempic, Wagovi. If you're not on a compound, you are dealing with a shortage. And it's it's only be it's only beginning to become more challenging and it's only going to get worse. So let's go over all of the information so you can make an informed plan on what you need to do and what you need to prepare for going forward. So um, there have been some recent studies taking place regarding Ozempic, which is semaglutide, and Parkinson's disease. They're also looking into treatment for addictions, for example, um, for alcoholism. And the longer these medications are on the market, the more conditions they find that can benefit from treatment with these medications. And it's really challenging because we started out you know, just this year, 2024, with Manjaro having added on Zepbound. So we started out with a diabetes medication, found out, hey, this is really great for weight loss. Now we've got weight loss version, right? Now we're, we're going into a phase where they're going to want to start prescribing these medications for all these other conditions, right? There was just that recent study showing about how heart and kidney conditions benefit from these, you know, prescriptions. So it's really going to put a lot of pressure on them because it's already in a shortage. So I, I like that Manjaro, Eli Lilly is, you know, building another facility. They've got the approval to be able to release the vials. Hopefully they'll be doing that soon, which would help when it comes to dealing with a shortage. But here's, here's what you need to keep in mind. If you are not able to get your medications, then you need to educate yourself on compounds. Let me give you the rundown on compounds. I'm going to do a more detailed video about specific companies, telehealth companies that you can use to get compounding medication. So this is just going to be kind of an overview just to get you started. So compounds are not covered by insurance. Compounding pharmacies are allowed to make the medication, right, trisepatide, semaglutide, in times of shortage because the pharmaceutical company obviously has the patent for the medication, but in times of shortage, which there have been multiple um, since these came on the market, these compounding pharmacies are allowed to create a compound of the medication, so the medication mixed with something else um, to then be able to sell, but it's not covered by insurance. Um, compounding pharmacies do not accept insurance. If you have a doctor who is willing to prescribe a compound, trisepatide or semaglutide, and then you can get it to a compound pharmacy directly, there is a chance that insurance will cover it, but nine times out of 10, no, because that's just not how it works. Um, also, with a compounding pharmacy, they have certain requirements that they have to meet. So they may make your doctor jump through a bunch of hoops if you try to use your just regular doctor. How these telehealth companies work is they have contracts with these compounding pharmacies so you go through the telehealth company, right? They use the compounding pharmacy. Compounding pharmacy sends medication to you. Here are some things that you need to keep in mind. 
You're not buying off some random Joe Schmo on Facebook. That is always a scam. You're not buying from a med spa because you're not, there's no way to know what the potency is because they don't do third party testing. These FDA pharmacies, they do third party testing and you should 100% request to see the proof of their third party testing and it will tell you the percentage of efficacy of the medication, right? So like, it's usually like 99.1 something percent, right? So it's, that's the percentage. So you need to make sure that you're going with um, a company that you can afford. Some companies charge a membership, right? Which is paying for your doctor visit, nutritionist, right? Other things. The other companies that don't charge memberships, sometimes they charge for shipping. So you need to look at that. You need to look at specifically your prescription, your medication. Are you getting semaglutide or trisevatide? Because semaglutide is significantly cheaper. So you need to look at that. You also, before you even get that far, you need to make sure that they can ship to your state. So there are some of the compounding pharmacies that are not contracted to ship to certain states. Um, it's usually like Mississippi, Louisiana, and California are usually the top three that I see on there. But regardless, you need to check to make sure that whichever company you're looking at ships specifically to your state. If they don't, you can scratch that one off the list and move on to the next one. So compounding, you're paying out of pocket. It's, it's gonna show up in a vial, right? With insulin needles, right? The real teeny tiny needles. You're gonna have to draw it up yourself and inject it yourself. There is no auto injector pen, right? That is specific to name brand. So keep that in mind. I've seen quite a few people post in the support groups when they get their medication from compound and they're like, this is a vial with a needle. What do I, what do I do with this? What, <laughs> and they don't know what to do because they were expecting, of course, what you see in commercials, which is the auto injector pen. So keep in mind, that's just name brand. It's not hard to do. Um, a lot of people uh, get nervous about needles. You can 100% do it. Um, especially if it was just for a short amount of time during a shortage. That brings me to my next point. I know I'm talking fast, but I'm trying to get all the information in here, so bear with me. Some of these telehealth companies require you to use them for at least three months. So that means that for three months, you're going to be paying out of pocket. So you need to make sure you're reading the fine print. Do they have a requirement that you have to use them for a certain number of months? The other thing you want to take a look at is dosing. Some of these telehealth companies at the lower doses, it's a set price. And then when you get up to the middle to high doses, it becomes more expensive. Make sure that you are aware of that beforehand. Read the reviews of the companies. The other thing you wanna do is look for coupon codes. Um, these will be running rampant on Facebook and TikTok. Uh, many of the companies, for example, Mochi is um, one of the top companies, they give everyone a coupon that they can then share with others, right? It's like, a, I give you $40, you give me $40 if you use my coupon. So make sure that before you sign up for anything, you check for a coupon because it can save you a little bit of money. The other thing you want to look for is um, do a search for whichever company that is on TikTok because many times they will run specials specific to their TikTok page, like their official company page. They will run TikTok specials and so you can get a discount. Many times it's waiving an, a membership fee, right? Or giving you a discount on membership or, you know, a, for a discount for your first two months or three months, right? So definitely do your research, check those out save money however you can. Um, okay, that's it for shortages and compounds for the quick overview. Let me know what questions you have down below. And uh, trust me, I've got the video coming on an in-depth into compounds, so stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, 
give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. I super appreciate you for sticking around and listening to me while I talk really fast. If any of you were using the fast forward button through all of that, I probably sounded like a chipmunk and it was like, boom, 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 boom. I love to do that. I think it's so fun with videos. Um, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. And as always, be kind, rewind.